Hey, what's up? It's me, Aldo, and I just finished reading this book called The Lives of Ants by Lauren Keller and Elizabeth Gordon, and I'm going to give you a brief summary so that we can talk about it. Uh, first of all, the authors make two major arguments, which is one, ants are essential to the world, and two, if we keep learning from them, then we can apply this knowledge into our daily lives. So the first point, they are important. Uh, they are very important because of their number. The, uh, they estimate that there is one quadrillion ants on Earth, which is like one followed by 15 zeros. That is uh, also like 15 to 20 percent of the whole world's biomass. Um, they are on every continent except Antarctica, so that's a lot of ants and therefore anything they do will have a major impact and um, the like six of the most most important things they do is um, they scavenge their scavengers so um, while they're scavenging for food they're cleaning up the the their ecosystem and um, while they're doing that foraging for food they also help with pollinization and spreading seeds and uh, aerating the, the soil when they're building their nests and uh, they interact with uh, plants and other insects and lastly they can be pests so in order to better talk about all of these uh, six functions that ants have let's, I'm going, let's say I take you, I'm taking you into an ant colony um, first of all in an ant colony uh, you'd see that uh, ant colonies are, are actual works of architecture and engineering. They, they are like complex mazes of tunnels w with special quarters and uh, very elaborate um, very elaborate works and uh, while the ants are building them they move a lot of earth and uh, if, the, if the nest is built on a tree or on leaves of a tree, the the ants will, in turn, for receiving protection from the from the tree, the ants will protect the tree from parasites and from animals that the tree does not uh, like. So it's so it's very interesting to see the symbiotic relationship between ants and, and plants. Um, if you were to go in an ant colony. Um, you would see uh, inside the nest, in the very center, the queen, which is just the centerpiece of the the colony's life. Uh, the major function uh, of the queen is going to be to to lay eggs, and she's going to do that all throughout her life, from like hundreds of thousands to billions of eggs. And most of these eggs are going to be fe female female ants, and um, in an ant colony, besides the queen, we would see the the male. The male does not have a very prominent role in the ant society. The only thing he might do is to fertilize the ant, the queen, when she wants to have male, male uh, sons, male ants. That's the. Other than that, they do not very good for other things in the ant colony. Um, another member of the ant colony is the soldier. The soldiers are very interesting because they they um, they engage in wars besides also of course protecting the colony from invaders. The the soldier will war against neighboring colonies and um, some ants don't know how to work, how to forage for food. So the soldiers will go and um, they will steal from other ants who are working and like taking food to their colony. These soldiers they will they will kidnap kidnap and steal them. And as if that weren't enough, they will build tunnels leading from their from their colony to their victim's colony and kidnap the, the baby ants so that these baby ants grow up to be slaves to the kidnappers. So it's very interesting to see how ants can be can be criminal, um, and then bef and then of course you see the f the daughters of the queen. They are they are you know most uh, the majority of the the colony, and um, 
they are going to be working throughout their whole lives non-stop diligently and they do not procreate so their life is pretty dim pretty sad i would say um and uh these daughters they they exercise they have many different functions some of them are going to be nursemaids they're going to take care of the brood some of them are going to be the engineers some of them are going to act as pharmacists because they grow, they will grow a fungus that acts as an antibiotic when the ant, the colony has some disease, some illness, they, they can treat them with this fungus. Um, to take this analogy further, if ants, um, ants they can get uh, honey, milk, and meat. That's, um, they get honey from, from the tree from from the tree they are living in and they're protecting it's like a, a sweet secretion that uh, that the, the tree will give out to the tr to the ants um, some ants have a symbiotic relationship with uh, with uh, aphids which are tiny lice and they in exchange for protection from the ants these aphids they will also secrete this kind of milk that the tr that the ants love, and uh, finally, ants are like um, they act as like herdsmen because they can herd, quote unquote, herd this type of larvae that they use as a source of uh, protein. So that's the ant society right there, full of functions and, and full of life. And um, lastly, the the ants can be pests, you know, if uh, invasive species are introduced into into another habitat which is not prepared for them and will, will cause chaos and destroy plantations and kill native species. So it's very important that we understand and keep on studying them. And uh, finally, the applications. Uh, socially, they poke fun at Marxism saying that hey look at look at the end society it's pretty much a socialist it's pretty much a communist society in the sense that there's a work cut out for them and there's no mobility and uh they're successful there are ants all over the world so marx could have been right but just not not about humans but about ants so the other uh, application is genetics um they talk about dna chips and how uh, discoveries in genetics studying ants have been applied to to humans but the most important application in my opinion is what they call swarm intelligence which is what the ants use pretty much uh, lots of members with one little task but in the union of these members they can accomplish great things such as building their nests and carrying prey larger than themselves um, so we can apply this concept of swarm intelligence to robotics. Secondly is communication. We can learn a lot from the way that ants communicate. They communicate through pheromones, which are chemical signals, and that pretty much while they're walking, they create a chemical trail that lets them know what is the most most fertile, the um, and the fastest and most efficient path from the from the nest to a, a source of food. So if we can we can apply this concept to the way that information travels on the internet and to communications and to bankings and uh, lastly is navigation um, there's the Sahara uh, ant which travels hundreds of meters in a straight line without any visual reference in the desert and uh, we some scientists speculate that it's through uh, the earth's magnetic field and the position of the sun so there's a lot to be learned from these ants which are amazing uh, fascinating insects and if we keep learning from them we will be able to apply it to our daily lives so i hope you liked it and uh, leave your commentaries until next book bye